Hi everybody, so um, it's Coach Fred here and today we're going back to translating graphs. Um, in the earlier video, we talked about graphs, uh, the, taking the parent function and either just shifting it up or down. Today, we're gonna be looking at what happens when we put something inside the function. So we're gonna go back to Desmos. We're looking at the absolute value function again. And just as a reminder, when we, we are looking at that parent, the, the best points to use are gonna be negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. And then our those are our inputs. Our outputs then would be two, one, zero, one, and two. All right, so I'm actually gonna make that graph. Um, I'm actually going to change to blue so we can see it clearly. So I've got my absolute value graph right here. Something like that. Okay, and if I go to Desmos, let's see what happens this time when we put something. So here's that parent graph. What happens when I put a number inside the function, so in the absolute value? Hmm. So what happens now is that sh it looks like the graph is moving to the right four units. Okay, so I'm gonna say it's like f of x, but it's moved to the right four units. Now you might be saying to yourself, well, wait a second, that looks like a negative four. Well, if you think about this, let me go back. If you think about this, if we took this point zero and we moved it to the right four, we still need the output to be zero. Well, in order for this x minus four's output to be zero, you'd actually have to put a positive four into it. So it should actually, the logic of that should make sense as to why it's moving in what you might say is the opposite of what it looks like. All right, so let's go back to that. Now, if we think about that again, so it moved to the right four units. So in this case, it's actually not changing the y values, it's changing the x values. So this zero, zero now has gone one, two, three, four to the right, which would be at four. Negative one would move four to the right, so it would be at three. Negative two would move four to the right, so it would be at two. One would move four to the right, so it would be at five. Two would move four to the right, and it would be at six. But the y's remain the same. So what do you notice about the x's and the y's? The x's change. Oh, my pen's not working so great today. The x's change, but y's remain the same. Now, Coach Fred likes to kind of give us things to remember because there's gonna be a lot of information that we're putting together here. So I always say, inside the function is gonna change x. So inside the function in this case would be that absolute value. Outside the function changes y. So that was when we looked at, say, the absolute value of x plus two. Remember, when it was on the outside here, we were moving, shifting the graph up, up and down, so our graph, our y values were changing. So inside changes x, outside changes y. All right, let's look at another example. Here now we have the quadratic graph. Again, we know it's a parabola. We know that our points that we plug into the parent are negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. We know our outputs are four, one, zero, one, and four. So again, we have a beautiful U-shaped parabola like this. And again, my graph's not gonna be perfect, but something like that. Okay, so if I've got x plus five, I want you to make a guess as to what it, what's happening to the graph. Now remember, if you think about the zero, zero point, if I wanna get zero, what would I need to put in there to make it zero? And that's the direction you move. All right, so hopefully you're saying this is gonna move to the left five units. Okay, well, let's check it out. Let's go back to Desmos. Let me change this around and let's do y equals x squared. So there's our beautiful parent graph. So y equals x plus five squared. All right, it, indeed, everything got shifted just to the left five units. Okay, so if it goes to the left five units, it's not changing the y values. Again, it's changing the x's. So I would need to subtract five from all those points. So I would be at negative seven, negative six, negative five, negative four, and negative three. Yet my y's would remain the same. All right, so if we describe the transla translation and graph it using a rule, meaning that point to point translation, any xy on the parent 
we would do, we would subtract five from the X and we would leave the Y the same. All right, so let's put this all together. I put both from video one and video two together. All right, so we're gonna give you a parent of the absolute value of X. Okay, so we'll do that absolute value again. We know the points are negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. We know that what comes out is two, one, zero, one, and two. All right, so we're gonna describe what G of X is doing to the parent function. Okay, so this would be moving to the right one and up three. So right one and up three. Now notice on the outside, we don't change the sign because it was just positive. It's moving all those points up three. So our point to point translation would then be X plus one, Y plus three. And so I can use that point to point translation to actually make my table. So I would always first write my parent points and now all of those points, all my X's, I'm gonna add one. So negative two plus one is negative one, negative one plus one is zero, one, two, and three. And then all my Y's, I'm gonna add three to, so that's gonna give me five, four, three, four, and five. I'm gonna plot my original, so zero, zero. I've got my original graph, probably should have done it in green. And then I've got my new graph that's moved to the right one, so negative one, five, two, three, four, five, zero, four, one, three, two, four, three, five. So I've taken my all my points, I've moved them to the right one, and I've moved them up three. And so that's our new function. All right. I now want to just add one piece to this, the vertex. Now remember, we called that turning point, that nice change from the pos uh, negative slope to the positive slope, we called that the vertex. In this case, it's a minimum value, it's a minimum. Well, the new vertex would be one, three. See that, one, three? So you can see the vertex actually comes directly from the equation, and that's gonna be true for all of our functions. However, not all our functions have vertexes, but their starting point could be moved to the right one and then up three. All right, so hopefully that was a helpful video and uh, have a great day.